We ended the first part of this project with our BLDC motor desperately trying to move, for which the reason was the big current rise through it and the incapability of my power supply to cover that demand. To find a suitable solution we already came to the conclusion that current chopping would be the way to go, which was also confirmed if we have a look at the current curves while utilizing the commercial ESC. To implement this feature, the datasheet of the L6234 presents us an application guide. As soon as the current reaches a threshold value, we simply deactivate the high side MOSFETs and activate the corresponding low side one, so that the two coils are shorted to one another and thus decrease their current flow. After a set wait time, the low side one then turns off, the high side one reactivates and the current rises through the coils once again until the process repeats. So to start off the integration of this current shopping technique into the Arduino codes, I added 6 additional step functions, which are pretty much identical to their counterparts, except that instead of connecting one phase to the supply voltage, they connect both phases to ground. Now to set a threshold value in which those intermediate steps are activated, we can either measure the current through the motor or simply use an additional timer. But since I already added current shunts to the circuit through which the current of each phase will flow, I will firstly try to measure the current. At a current flow of around 1 amp, we get a voltage drop of roughly 0.2 volts across the resistors, which once the voltage is measured by the analog pin A6, equals a value of 41. This will be a threshold value for the chopping. And to activate it, I removed the do once flag for now and replaced it with a wait flag in combination with an analog read function before each step commands. The principle is that the microcontroller will continuously activate the usual steps until the current reaches the threshold value. Then the corresponding low side MOSFET will be activated and the wait flag will be set. This flag, like the name implies, stands for the wait time which is recommended by the L6234 datasheet to be around 30 microseconds, which is pretty close to the value the commercial ESC uses, which is around 56 microseconds. I however went with a value of 50 microseconds, which I created by utilizing the timer 2 of the Arduino microcontroller. All the timer interrupt then does is resetting the white flag, so that the usual steps can once again be activated. But we should not forget to reset the timer 2 counter when the intermediate steps are activated. After uploading the new codes and supplying power, we can see that the rotor does in fact move, but not in a way that would be useful for anything. And if we take a peek at the power supply, we can once again see that the current limit still gets reached quite frequently. To find the problem, I measured the voltage at the analog pin 6 which represents the voltage drop across the current shunts. It was noticeable that the maximum voltage drops were around 1.2 volts, which would equal around 6 amps. That means that even though I utilized a small prescaler for the ADC, which equals a sample time of around 5 microseconds, the ADC was still too slow to react accordingly. To solve this problem, I added a comparator IC whose output connects to pin 3 of the Arduino and a potentiometer to the schematic. This way, by setting a threshold value of 0.2 volts with the potentiometer, the comparator will pull its output high whenever the voltage drop of the current shunts exceeds the threshold value. We can then use the signal on pin 3 as an external interrupt, which will set the weight flag instead of the analog read function and thus speed things up quite a bit. So after adding all the newly required components to the circuits, uploading the new codes and reattaching the motor, it was time for another test run, which turned out much better. The rotation speed may not be as fast as the commercial ESC, but it is definitely usable. Only problem was that if we take a look at the power supply, we can still see a couple dozens of current spikes. So once again, I measured the voltage across the current shunts, which revealed a rather normal looking behavior for the most part. But on the other hand, there seems to occur a big current flow sporadically, 
which does not get interrupted even though the external interrupt pin got pulled high. And that was the moment I said, screw measuring, I'm going to use an additional timer. As a reference value, I went with the time, the current required to reach our previously utilized threshold value, which was around 8 microseconds. Then I simply set up the second timer to interrupt by utilizing a value of 16, which is around 8 microseconds, and set the white flag through the corresponding interrupt instead of the measuring bullshit. And after uploading the new codes, we can see that we finally achieved some decent results with only minor current spikes. The motor actually rotated so well that I added the propeller to it and enjoyed the light breeze that it created. But if you think that it can rotate fast enough to create a decent uplift, then you are wrong. Because once a certain speed is reached, the rotor gets stuck. The reason for this unwanted behavior is quite easy to understand when you think about it. So far, we use timer 1 to switch between the 6 different steps with a cycle duration between 80 and 1.6 milliseconds. That means we dictated when the next step should occur. But what we didn't care about so far was at which point exactly the magnets reached the ideal position to switch to the next step. For that, we would need a feedback system, like Hall effect sensors, that tell us where the rotor is currently located. But since our BLDC motor clearly does not feature such sensors, we have to use another technique called BEMF, or back electromotive force. As an example, we power the coils A and C, according to step 1, which leave phase B pretty much floating in the air. Now according to the magnetic fields, one magnet will move towards coil B, which thus induces a positive voltage into it. The perfect moment to switch to the next step would be when the magnet is just about to pass phase B, which coincidentally is the moment the magnet starts inducing a negative voltage into the coil. So we can use the zero crossing point not only from phase B, but basically from all the phases that are floating during a step as an indicator to move to the next step. That is why I added a second comparator IC connected the inverting inputs of the three required comparator stages to the virtual neutral point of the BLDC motor and connected each phase separately to each one of the three non-inverting inputs of the comparators. Their outputs then connect to pin 10, 11 and 12. And after soldering the additional components to the perf board and connecting them to the rest of the circuits, we can see that by utilizing the code we crafted so far, the three outputs create a PWM signal, which changes its output state whenever a zero crossing occurs. So I set up a pin change interrupt on pin 10, 11 and 12, and started altering the code one last time. Now my optimization is rather crude and definitely not the best solution, but it works acceptably well. While I still use the timer 1 to generate a time in which the next step should occur, I also utilize the new pin change interrupts at higher rotation speeds to not only increase the on time for the current shopping, but also increase the step counter prematurely if a floating phase of the motor changes its potential through the electromagnetic induction. And to conclude this project, let's upload the code one last time and see how well the motor rotates. As you can see, it still works very well at low speeds, which is an advantage in comparison to the commercial ESCs, which can only operate at high speeds. But on the other hand, my DIY ESC cannot reach rotation speeds fast enough to create a sufficient uplift. But the reason for that is the increased current flow through the L6234 driver, which heats it up to a point where it starts to shut down. A similar problem occurs when trying to use bigger BLDC motors, which obviously require more current to rotate correctly. So that is the point where you can use more modern ICs in combination with beefier MOSFETs to create a more powerful ESC. But that is a subject for another video. Until then, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Consider supporting me through Patreon so that I can continue producing videos like this. Stay creative and I will see you next time.